Back Row Steelers Show, part of the Back Row family of podcasts. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. I'm Rob Sprout. Thanks again to the Back Row Network for having us. Uh, I'm having a really good time with those guys. Uh, We talk almost daily. Uh, It's really, really fun. We have a good time. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, review on whatever platform you're listening to us on. Uh, We're on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean. Um, I'm working on iHeartRadio. I'm still waiting to hear back from them to see what the deal is and uh, what what the holdup is as far as getting us on there. Uh, They say they could take up to two weeks, and they sure are taking that time that they said they would take. Uh, still haven't gotten any emails from you guys or any listener questions or anything to our email. That's backrowstealers at gmail.com. Hit us up. Like, even if you just want to drop in and say hi or something, like, it'd be cool to see something come in here so I can talk about it. Uh, I really, really appreciate all the fans out there. We're getting up there in downloads. I think I'm getting close to 220 downloads, which is pretty awesome, uh, for just kind of a little one man operation going on here. Go ahead, hit us up on the Twitter or the Instagram. Uh, we are at Back Row Steelers on both those platforms. Jump on there, say hi, follow, uh, give give the podcast a follow. If you just if you want to drop some knowledge on us, talk about some things, I'd be happy to sit there and have a good conversation on some social media type things too. Today's episode, we're going to talk about a few things, not a whole lot. Uh, Minka Fitzpatrick for one, James Conner's back muscles. And uh, Deontay Johnson, we're going to talk a little bit about what may have been holding him back. So uh, without further ado, let's get this party started with Minka Fitzpatrick. Minka has said uh, he's been preparing for normal, uh, for normal season, which is good news for the Steelers defense. So he's been down in Florida uh, doing things. There's no OTAs right now, so he's still in Florida doing what he's doing. He's training hard down there. Uh, Says that he's a self-motivated kind of guy. And that he'll be in great shape. Uh, his only concern really is with his teammates, uh, especially the new guys coming in. He said, basically said the Steelers are pretty lucky because they have a few new faces there. Uh, so chemistry can kind of get a little uh, difficult with the new guys. But they're actually overcoming some obstacles with that by actually having good conversations with the rookies instead of trying to shut them out. Like I- I've heard like some people are like, hey, don't don't talk. Just listen. We're doing our thing. He said that's kind of the opposite thing that's going on there. So he he seems to think that the new people coming in is going to be less of an obstacle than what other teams are dealing with, I guess, because of whatever they're doing uh, media-wise to talk to each other and training and stuff like that to work on what is going to help them mesh together when the time comes for them to actually practice together and everything as a team. Uh, I think uh, some of the competition there is gonna is going to raise their game because they know they're fa- uh, facing it a lot, a lot of talent. I guess three of the last four Heisman Trophy winners are inside the division, guys. So yeah, Joe Burrow, Baker Mayfield, you know Lamar Jackson's out there. It's just kind of crazy. He uh, he uh, recognizes that that could be a tough thing for the Steelers, and it's it's a big media hype thing for the AFC North especially. So there's, I feel like there's quite a bit more incentive for these teams to play a little better and. Uh, Pittsburgh, he says, is up for the task and ready to rock and roll. And their defense is probably going to be pretty darn good this year. I'd honestly put them, if you, if any of you guys play fantasy football, pick up the Steelers. You might be able to get them kind of a little bit later in your fantasy football drafts. Take a look at them. As long as uh, they stay healthy on defense, I think they're going to be quite a force to be reckoned with. Now, Minka has said, uh, if you guys remember, he got to the Steelers and started playing hard, immediately made an impact right out the gate. In his first seven games, he had five interceptions. And he says the reason they slowed after the first few games is because quarterbacks weren't even throwing his way. And after looking at the stats and everything, I can agree with him. So basically, their teams were like forced to change their game plan around him, which is kind of unique because that means he shuts down a part of the field and we kind of the, the Steelers kind of corner – what, what sort of offensive weapons that other teams can use against them. So that that's going to make a huge difference in this year, especially now that he's going to know the system more. They definitely made the system a little bit easier for him. 
So it, it was kind of like a, hey, man, this is where you're going to be. This is what we want you to do. Go do it. And now that he's learning the defense plays a lot more and had some more time to mesh with the rest of the defense, I think you look out. Make it Fitzpatrick's going to be a nasty force to be reckoned with this year. Again, he went on to talk about how they're emphasizing and incorporating the younger guys and rookies into the virtual offseason. So they're all on the same page instead of treating them like rookies and basically making them shut up and listen. So I, I, I'm pretty pumped, guys. The Steelers' defense is going to be nasty. I think you're looking at a rebound here as far as our performance. So points scored against us is going to definitely help us, or the lack thereof is going to help us win some games. All right, let's move on to James Conner's back muscles are crazy huge. I don't know that I've ever seen, if you guys look on Twitter or anything, uh, look at James Conner's pictures on there, and you're going to see his back muscles. I didn't know you could have muscles there. Like The guy's like arms just kind of go down to like the middle of his back. It's the strangest looking thing, but the guy's rocked up. Now, being four years removed from cancer, I guess he says that he feels better than ever, and it looks like it. He's out there lifting weights, looking like an absolute monster. I think that he wants to go out there and be as healthy as possible, and that's definitely something Pittsburgh could use. If you get somebody that's rocked up like that and is just willing to go out there and just demolish people, which James Conner is, I, I, man, I, I, I'm pumped. Like, yeah, dude's a beast. And now I guess we'll move on to Deontay Johnson. Now, there's so much stuff and people talking like about oh, Deontay Johnson's just kind of okay and this, that, and the other. And he started off kind of slow. Like, uh, let's not forget that this is kind of the Pittsburgh way. And usually in your first couple of games, you're not really in there a whole lot. I mean, I don't necessarily want to bring him up, but Antonio Brown in his first like nine games only suited up for three. So if that says anything about Deontay Johnson. There was only a few games at the beginning of the season where he wasn't listed as a starter. So I guess some of his struggle last year was also apparently due to a strained groin in week two. He says he played through it, so he, he wasn't 100% like the whole season. Uh, over In the offseason here, he's had sports hernia surgery. Uh, still hasn't been cleared to practice yet, which, which is fine. He he's The guy's super motivated, and I, I have no, no questions about him being a crazy offensive weapon this year, especially with Juju being back and being healthy. Juju's definitely worked on uh, his body too. He calls it revenge body. So he, he's in there and he's going to be drawing a ton of coverage. So Deontay Johnson, you can look for him to eat this year. He's just going to be gobbling up uh, yards, receptions, and you're going to see, again, for you fantasy football players, crazy fantasy production. As long as Ben's healthy, we're going to keep adding that caveat. As long as Ben's healthy, you're going to see good fantasy production from both Juju and Deontay Johnson this year. Again, Deontay Johnson, either way, like I don't understand like where the respect is. Uh, I've been seeing some social media opinion types saying they're down on him. I don't think that's, that's, that's not accurate at all. He produced even with all the backup quarterbacks playing last year. So just, I mean, he had... 92 targets, 59 receptions. Now you got to keep in mind, it doesn't seem like it's a lot of receptions for the amount of targets. He had Mason Rudolph and Duck Hodges thrown to him, which I'm not saying they're bad quarterbacks, but they are definitely not like the most accurate passers in the world. So there's a lot of catches that he had to go out there and actually make anyway. So a lot of his receptions were kind of acrobatic type catches. Uh, so again, 59 receptions for 680 yards and five touchdowns as a rookie. So that's, that's pretty beefy and it's a really good stat line for a rookie, especially. So once he gets clear and he gets out there and practicing, you got to look out for Deontay Johnson. This guy's going to be an animal this year. I, th I think he's, he, everyone just needs to stand by. This guy's got some shit to prove. So he's going to go out there and oh man, I think teams are going to be sleeping on him defenses. So, all right. Well, uh, I think that's going to do it for the back row Steelers show today. Don't really have a whole lot to talk about. Not a lot going on in the news. I just didn't want to skip our weekly podcast. I, I really enjoy sitting down just recording some of the news and notes and stuff that I've read or uh, had pop up my feed. Like it, It's it's just football's 365 days a year for me, and I, I seriously love it. I'm loving that you guys are downloading the podcast and listening. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Go out there, share it with all your other uh, Steeler Nation friends. I appreciate all the support that I've been getting and social media support. Uh, we're, we're, man, we're having a good time, guys. Again, I'm, I'm super grateful. So thank you very much. I don't know if I want to talk about the uh, all the riots and stuff or not. It's not really my thing. All right. Well, uh, everyone, thank you for listening. And everyone, stay safe. Cities are getting kind of crazy. Please, 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 peaceful protesting is the way to go. Everyone just stay safe out there. Don't get in trouble. Don't go do a whole bunch of illegal stuff just because everyone else is doing it. All right? That, that doesn't help anybody. doesn't solve anything. So stay in your homes if you got to. Stay safe. All right? You can make your voice heard in other ways. So, again, everyone, stay safe. Have a great week. Thanks for listening. See you next time on the Back Row Steelers Show. And I'm not sure if you guys have ever seen the Will Ferrell movie Semi-Pro. It's my favorite Will Ferrell movie. There's a scene where he points at a sign up on the wall and says, What does that sign say? And then they mumble, Ely. Ely. He's like, What does it say? What does it mean? And he goes, Everybody love everybody. Let's do that. Everybody love everybody.